From 2011 to 2014, Ryan Broyles could say that he'd caught more passes in his college football career than any other player ever. It seemed he was destined to make millions for years to come in the NFL. Unfortunately, for reasons we'll discuss throughout the course of this video, the second round pick never even made it to a second contract. A study done by Sports Illustrated a few years back showed that 78% of NFL players filed for bankruptcy after only two years of retirement. And I'd have to imagine that for guys who never signed a second contract, that percentage is probably even higher. But the subject of today's video, not only avoided bankruptcy, but he's nearly tripled his net worth in retirement. And we're talking money completely unrelated to football or entertainment, period. And today, he's richer than he was as a player. A little while back, Ryan actually reached out to me on Twitter. And after a brief talk, he and I both thought that his story was a really good one when it comes to just basic financial literacy. A lot of times on his channel, I tell cautionary tales. This is the opposite of that. This is the type of blueprint you want to follow. You're not going to be dealing with the same numbers, but take these principles and concepts and apply them to your lifestyle. So without further ado, this is what happened to Ryan Broyles. Cue the Wayne. Yeah, Support for today's video is brought to you by Manscaped. Look, we're all stuck inside right now trying to figure out how to keep things clean and hygienic. And if you like me and you sitting at home with a significant other, you should probably pay extra attention. Look, facts is facts. Manscaped is the only men's brand right now dedicated to below the waist hygiene. Bro, I promise you your old lady will appreciate this and we all grown men so y'all shouldn't need that much persuading anyway. Bro, they didn't have stuff like this when I was younger. I mean, we talking a delicate process so as a novice, you might not have the necessary finesse required to get this done without incident. Fortunately, the Manscaped team just released the Lawnmower 3.0. They got the ceramic blade and they got the skin safe technology to prevent any accidents. We're talking a premium product, 90 minute battery life, perfect for traveling. They got the LED light on there for added precision. They even got ball deodorant and ball toner. So they, they pretty serious about this, man. Also, I gotta say, they sent me this dope travel bag, bro. This is gonna actually come in handy and it go pretty hard. Of course, they hooked your boy up with a discount code. So, are all you gotta do is use the code flimlo 20 at manscaped.com and that's gonna save you 20% off of your order. Again, that's flimlo 20 You wanna use that at manscaped.com. Click the link in the description. It'll take you straight there. Shout out to Manscaped once again for sponsoring the video. Click the link, go check them out, man. Your balls are thank you. Ryan Broyles was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, long before the Thunder drafted and traded three of the biggest stars in the NBA. You might not be surprised to hear that Ryan actually had some hoop dreams of his own early on, as he played travel ball as a kid and averaged 18 points and six rebounds as a high school senior. He grew up like many of us, in a house with hardworking parents doing everything they could to provide. But despite their hard work, there wasn't really a whole lot of extra money to go around. There was no real talks about budgeting, no real talks about finances. And I know in a lot of households, especially when I was growing up, Money was kind of a taboo subject. You didn't really bring that up. I think a lot of NFL players and people in general have this problem. So when they do beat the odds and come into these large sums of money, they end up on the wrong side of a 30 for 30 or an E60. Through much of Ryan's life, he was on a similar trajectory. What saved him? Well, Ryan credits his lovely wife, a book he read years back called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a mission trip to Haiti, and I know for a fact everything I just named played a huge role for sure. But there's something he left out. Ryan Broyles has a hustler's spirit. We're talking a cat that was mowing lawns at eight years old to pay for basketball camps. And when his parents gave him a green hand-me-down Mitsubishi Galant, a ride him and his boys called the Green Machine, Ryan worked odd jobs to pay for the gas, the insurance, the repairs. He got it up and running, put it on the road, and then had to pay to keep it there. Which with them old cars like that, 
it can be a drain on your pockets. He learned the value of money early on through trial and error, but one of those early errors saw Ryan charged with attempted larceny. See, back in 2007, gas prices hit a new record high, and an 18 year old Ryan Broyles, not yet having the funds really under control, was actually caught attempting to steal gas for the green machine, man. It's crazy, they caught my boy slipping. He was caught and charged with attempted larceny. The crazy thing is, the $100 fine that he ended up having to pay, that would've filled the tank up a few times, so lesson learned. We spoke earlier on Ryan's basketball ability, but dude saw his share of track and field glory as well. As a guy who only ever grew to be 5'10", this cat recorded a 6'10 high jump back in high school. And in football, y'all already know how it go. Never really came off the field play, wide receiver, and DB, he actually finished his high school career with an impressive 20 INTs at defensive back. On offense, he caught nearly 1,700 yards and 80 catches with 18 touchdowns in his career. Ryan didn't know it at the time, but the numbers he'd soon accrue on the college level would actually dwarf his high school stats. Ryan received a scholarship to the University of Oklahoma. He redshirted his first year, then in his first ever college game, Duke caught seven passes for 141 yards, breaking Oklahoma's freshman record. He finished that 2008 season with 46 grabs for 687 yards, both also freshman records at Oklahoma, so Dude was the man right out the gate. He played the full four years at Oklahoma, and after that freshman season, he never had a year with less than a thousand yards ever again. In his junior season, 2010, Dude went crazy. 131 catches for 1,600 yards and 14 touchdowns. That's more catches than he had in his entire high school career and almost as many yards in that one collegiate season. Now y'all know what I always say, there is little to no upside in returning for that dreaded senior season, especially after you beast out as a junior. I actually asked Ryan about this directly and the information he gave me made me feel that in this particular case, my little rule does not apply. Here's why. For one, despite Ryan's productivity, people weren't sure how he'd project to the NFL. Dude was only 5'10", 185 with average speed, and even though he was coming off that monster junior season, he was still only given a second round grade. Add on top of that, if Ryan went pro after his junior season, he would have been a part of the 2011 draft class. What other receivers came in in that draft class? AJ Green and Julio Jones were at the top of the class. Then you got forgotten cats like John Baldwin, who was 6'4", 230, coming out of Pitt, who ran a 4-4-9. He also went in the first round. Then you had cats like Titus Young, Torrey Smith, also in that class. So it was a pretty stacked class toward the top. And the only reason Ryan would have been leaving after his junior year was if he thought he could sneak into that first round. Obviously, looking at all the other players that were coming out and the fact that Ryan had a second round grade, he didn't feel like he was gonna go in the first, so he decided to return for his senior season. But that wasn't the only reason. If you recall, 2011 was also the NFL's lockout year, so a lot of uncertainty with that. Another reason was that at the end of Ryan's junior season, he was in striking distance of becoming the all-time receptions leader in college football not an opportunity that presents itself every day. So he came back for his last year and on October 15, 2011, in a game where Ryan went off with 13 grabs over 200 yards and two touchdowns, Ryan Broyles became the NCAA's all-time reception leader. He did it, man. Coming back that year also allowed him to take a mission trip to Haiti where he grew mentally and spiritually. He got really serious with his high school sweetheart who's now his wife and the mother of his kids. So in this case, coming back for that senior year in many ways was one of the best things that ever happened to Ryan Broyles. My concern is always the unnecessary injury. And oh yeah, the unnecessary injury definitely occurred. Shortly after breaking the all-time receptions record, Ryan would sustain the most serious injury of his football career up to that point, a torn ACL effectively ending his college career. And bro, here's the crazy thing. Had he made it through that entire season, he might actually still hold that record 
today. Now check it out, he's still third all time, which is goddamn impressive, but it's still fun to look at this quick what if, so check it out. So Ryan only played eight full games during his senior season, and through those eight games, he had 81 receptions, dog. So this man was averaging 10 receptions per game through the first eight games of his senior season. Now, if you look at the first three years of his career, he averaged 13 games per season. So that last year, he was five games short of his average games played. Assuming he played those five games and continued to hit his average receptions per game, that's 50 more grabs. Today, the record holder is Zay Jones, who has exactly 50 more catches than Ryan does right now. So like I said, had he made it through that entire season, he might actually still hold that record today. A pretty fun what if topic. In 2012, Ryan Broyles was drafted in the second round by the Detroit Lions. He was an NFL player, a childhood dream finally realized. But something had changed in Ryan. That ACL injury made him remember cutting yards and working odd jobs and stealing gas and all of that. These were things he wanted to avoid in the future. So when he signed this $3.6 million rookie contract with a million dollars guaranteed, Ryan thought to himself, how can I never work again? How can I make this NFL money last me for the rest of my life? It was a great question to ask because after the ACL injury, Ryan's body wasn't the same. He ended up having a second ACL surgery and had to deal with the torn Achilles all within only a few years into the NFL. Because of this, Ryan was never able to make an impact with the Lions. And after only 21 games in the NFL, Ryan Broyles, one of the greatest college football wide receivers of all time, walked away from the game forever. This is the part of the story where the player usually hits rock bottom before grasping for some type of hope to pull themselves back up. Not Ryan. The hustler spirit he uncovered as a kid never actually left him. When he asked that question, how can I never work again? How can I make this NFL money last for the rest of my life? He didn't just ask it. He actually found answers. As I mentioned earlier, Ryan recommends a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Ryan Kiyosaki, a book he credits with changing his life from a financial standpoint. I've actually heard a ton about this book over the years and I've yet to read it, but after it's now being suggested by yet another successful person, it's 100% gonna be the very next book I pick up. It was through principles found in this book that led to Ryan Broyles, a guy who became a millionaire immediately after signing his rookie contract, to live on a $60,000 per year budget every year since his first year in the NFL. Imagine being an NFL player and pretty much all of your coworkers are multimillionaires coming around you with really nice, really expensive things. If you ever saw one of your classmates with a pair of J's and you wanted them, or they got the new rims and they ride and you wanted some, or you became a manager at work and they all had the nice watch, so you wanted a nice watch. If you ever have lived that reality, which has to be 99% of people, you can imagine how difficult it must be for Ryan to be in that position, be able to afford many of these things and abstain. That's tough. Ryan put the rest of his money in the stock market along with other investments for later down the road. His goal was to play 10 years in the NFL, but he planned, invested, and saved money like it would only last 10 minutes. So once he knew he wasn't physically the same, instead of beating his body down constantly over the years and begging to be on somebody's roster for a check, he was able to walk away from the game knowing he'd be fine. Ryan asked for his release from the Lions in 2015 and hasn't played an NFL down since. He never signed the second contract, but instead of living beyond his means and eventually just running out of money, Ryan Broyles has nearly tripled his net worth in retirement. He actually began to dabble with real estate back in 2012, bought his first property for $19,000, fixed it up, put about another 20 into it over time, and I was appraised at $84,000. A lot of work and investment went into it, but over time, he doubled his bread. Over the years, he continued to do that with more and more expensive properties, and today he's got a real estate portfolio worth about $8 million, multiplying several times over what he made as an NFL player. Bro, I got tons of videos on what not to do 
as you navigate life. But Ryan Broyles is a story of a guy who did it right and ensured that he's gonna be able to provide for his family for years to come. That is the goal, dawg. Shout out to Ryan for reaching out to me. I think he knew that this video could help inspire a whole lot of people. Be smart with y'all money out there, bro. Enjoy your life, but don't live beyond your means. Look into real estate. That might be your thing, or you might have another investment strategy. But the internet is your friend, and a quick Google search can find you so much information in 2020 to better your life and secure your future. My name is Flimlo Raps. I'm going to you next time, fellas. One. Yeah.